Silo continues to have me gripped, and this is the show that I look forward to the most when talking about uh, as the weeks go along. I'm giving my thoughts and reactions to the sixth episode of Silo called The Relic right after the jump. Hello, everyone. Terrence here with Hollywood Already Did It. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you will be among the first to know. Sixth episode, this one's called The Relic. If you remember at the, um, the end of the last episode, Jules was ruminating while looking at the relic, the Pez, we know as a Pez dispenser, we can cops stop calling it the relic, but um, the relic, the Pez dispenser that George had, she was looking at that and her mind was sort of ruminating as to what to do next. This episode leads right into what she decided to do. What she decided to do was immediately tell the judge to go kick rocks. Because <laughs> what they specifically told her not to do was like, hey, don't continue this, this uh, investigation into Trumbull and any of that. And she, what she just decided to do is, yeah, investigate Trumbull. Uh, I don't think Jules cares too much about what happens to her life. So we start off with Jules, Billings, and some other... Uh, agents going to the home of Trumbull to sort of get some more investigations, get some more materials to see exactly why they would be the ones to have killed Martin, like what made them do so. So they go in, they look in, um, mind you, the lights are already shut off. So judicial has already made the, the decision to cut the lights off there, which is a little bit premature. Apparently they take a little bit more time for that to happen than what occurred here. They go in and they find the Pez dispenser very conveniently. Specifically, Billings finds it and hands it off to to uh, to Jules. That's important because it'll come back into play later in the in the episode. But if not clear, Jules planted they <laughs> planted it there. We then see a flashback of Jules and George when they were together in their relationship. And there's a point where they're having a bit of an argument um, about some of the dangers that they put themselves into, what they each other feels unnecessarily. Jules. Um, stealing the mechanical tape, but she just feels the better tape. George is kind of like, well, why would you do that? And she's like, well, I'm when I put myself in danger, or when I do things like this out of the ordinary, um, I'm doing it for a purpose. This can help people. It's, this tape is significantly better than the tape that I normally have, and I can help so many more people. When you go and steal these relics or get these relics, what is the purpose of that? Like that, that they're just trinkets. They mean nothing. To which George starts speaking like some some... Jay Z, Eminem style lyrics. He starts dropping some bars on them. Like, hey, yeah, real quick. If these things aren't worth risking our lives for, why are there risks to our lives to have them? Oh, oh, you spitting? It then also leads to the fact that he's like, these relics, whatever these are, these are the keys to answer some of the biggest questions that the silo has. George, for whatever troubles that we see that he causes or gets into uh, later in this episode, he. Is a person who's always sort of moving and kind of thinking, kind of trying to fix things out. I appreciate that because I've always been a tinkerer. Like, I want to know how things work. He wants to know how things work. He's not just uh, okay with the status quo. Billings, however, is good with the status quo. He's a stickler for the rules. And he comes back in the next day with Jules, who still has not um, put the Pez dispenser into evidence with judiciary. Now, that's supposed to be how it goes. And she's like, nope. I got rules. I can do things if I do this. If I do it this way and this way because I'm doing an investigation, I can keep it a little longer. And Billings is like, I understand the pack. Nobody knows the pack better than him. And the pack says that if you're going to do that, if you're going to continue to investigate, you got to get an approval from Judge Meadows. In fact, everything goes through Judge Meadows. Judge Meadows is the beginning, middle, and end <laughs> of everything that the pack goes. And to the point where Jules Post says, hey, we can actually pull out a bunch of the pages of this uh, pack and just say asterisk see Judge Meadows, um, which is important because in the last episode, Sandy, her former assistant, kind of was like, Judge Meadows don't care about the truth. So she may not be the person that you want to go to, but that is how it has to go um, because Billings is sort of a stickler for the rules. So Billings, uh, Jules meet up with Sims, and Sims, they all meet to go and to uh, speak to Judge Meadows. It is just a small thing, but it's, it's such a character beat. Even though Sheriff is higher in ranking than Billings, Sims greets Billings by last name first and pats him and kind of says, hey, and then Sheriff. It's, it's small, but it's a, character, it's a character piece to kind of show you who he is and how he 
respects or does not respect uh, jewels. There they present the relic. They present the relic in a bag and say, hey, this was found on Troubles at Troubles Place. To which um, Judge Meadows is like, I thought we said this was done. I thought we were done with this. Why, why are we still investigating this? Seems like, yeah, we did. Plus, this was clearly, this didn't belong to Trumbull. Like, I can tell you that. We here at Judiciary, we know all the relics that are in this uh, community. We know that this relic wasn't sanctioned or um, registered to Trumbull. And Judge even kept questions like, and what made you continue this thing on? And she's like, well, Jewel says, unlicensed relics, you know, as we all know, lead to criminal activity. And Judge like, you don't have to read. I, I'm aware. Like, I wrote I basically broke the damn thing. My name's all throughout that piece. <laughs> um, but as Sims continues, he's talking about like the judiciary knows all about all these relics specifically. And this is why I was always confused. Like, why is she just brazenly what's wearing that watch? Because that's a relic. And we know how relics are, are treated here. But Sims calls out Jules watch. And it's like, yo, I know that that watch is, uh, is a relic and is not registered to you. It's registered to the to George. The person you say has been murdered. And now kind of hinting at like you're using your badge kind of found out information when that's not what you're here for uh kind of putting the seed in the meadows and everybody else's ears they're like we can't trust you if you're just out here brazenly wearing relics to sort of continue her investigation and sort of get out of this contentious situation that she's in jules uh suggests to sims like hey let me continue a search just wide on to sort of Get any other undocumented relics. Clearly, this one wasn't in your thing, so let's find out some more uh, to sort of build up your database and get the ones that we don't know. And Sims is like, okay, much to the side eye from the judge. Like, All right, cool. On forgiveness day, let's go ahead and do that. People might be more forthcoming to come up with what it is they have to knowing that they won't get into trouble today on forgiveness day. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and take a list. But if you're going to do this, the only way that I'm going to allow you to do this is you got to take Billings with you. He has to be at your hip the whole time because nobody knows the pact better than hell. He knows it better than I do. So go ahead and take him with you. Um, we learned that that's also sort of a time for him to sort of buy time so he can go research that relic because he they do have it in the database. He was just kind of blowing smoke to, so, so she wouldn't be aware that I can find this out really quickly. Jules tries to lose Billings and Billings is like, nah. No, no, not today, because they're going to be watching you like a hawk. Uh, and so you're going to want to have me at the hip. And they're like, OK, she's like, OK, cool. So they go to go see um, Patrick, Patrick Kennedy, who she hid and Marge punched that gentleman. They go to see him first to kind of get information about relics. And he brings up a good point. It's kind of like sometimes they do this. Well, you've seen one of some of those police procedurals where they have like a drop off your gun day. And then those guns are like in the history book or in books of being attached to a murder. And so then you get jammed up. Kennedy is, Patrick is like, yo, I'm not giving you any relics or any names because you're going to use this whenever you see fit in the future to come jam me up just because I gave this to you on the day that I, I wasn't. So nah, you're not getting nothing from me. He also checks another person who checks that that watch she has on is a relic. And one of the things that he says, it's pretty poignant. It's like, hey, look, People with badges who are doing things for personal reasons, that uh, people are going to get hurt. People are going to get hurt bad by that. But after a little bit of a coaxing, he finally does give them a name, and they head over to uh, to see um, Regina. Regina, come to find out, is a former lover of George, which creates a bit of a contention between she and Jules. But um, Jules informs her of his death. To which, not much of a, not much of a reaction because I, she feels that George kind of used her. Um, Jules asked if the relationship was sanctioned. To which she was like, "No, it wasn't sanctioned." But George isn't the type of person to sanction. And by this point, she's already sort of deduced. She can probably look to to see this, who, what she looks like. That you're somebody that George would would be in a relationship with. But she essentially uh, says that George is a. a a butterfly like he hops from place to place to place depending on whatever it is he needs and once he gets all that he needs from that person he just moves on to the next person and so that's what he did with you and so there's a bit of a back and forth buildings is like hey i realize that this is getting a little bit dicey so and he is well aware that now he can see that jules was in a relationship with george she's like let's just go ahead and leave before she before they do though regina hits her with that one last line like yeah when he said when he told you that he loves you did you believe him 
to which Jules just starts sort of questioning who George was to her and sort of what George was to this world. Like, was he using people? Was he just hopping? Did he actually love me? Like, she starts getting in her head about what this is and starts questioning whether or not she should even be trying to look for who murdered him because what's the point? What she thought she had with him wasn't real. So Sims uh, brings Bernard to the, the sheriff station, clears the station and wants to have a conversation with Jules because he's found out that this relic, the Pez relic, was in fact sanctioned to George. It was attached to George. And so all signs point to the fact that Jules put it there. Um, to which Jules comes up with some cockamamie well, BS and like, nope, the only thing that he's ever given me was his watch. Still not implying that he was a lover to her. Um, though Billing sits there's quietly kind of keeping that to the vest. Um, but Bernard sort of gets her back and kind of gives her a bit of a leeway to get out of this and says, hey, look, real quick. Was Trumbull one of the people that was on the detail to search George's home after his death? And Sims like, you know, I can't give you that. I can't give you that. It's bad information. That's all private. And Bernard's like, cool, cool, cool. I'm good with that. I don't need to know. But let's say if he was. If he was, maybe he harmlessly took the trinket without thinking much of it. Is that a possibility? To which Sims is like, oh, this is some BS, but okay, sure. We'll, we'll believe that. And he kind of looks at Jules and gives her a sort of a side eye and then kind of says, hey, look, whoever killed Marnes and the mayor, let's just let that be. Because if anything else happens, if we go into it any further, we're going to destabilize everything. So let's just say, cool. Okay, Sirach, Sirach. Everything that will be, will be. We're done here. We're going to leave this alone um, to sort of give her a leash to get out of this and sort of get her off, get him, Sims, off the trail of whatever Jules is doing. So they all take off. And then Billings and Jules remain to sort of have a conversation. And Billings checks Jules about setting him up as a patsy to take the fall. And she's like, oh, I would never do that. It's like, you literally just threw my name out there, which is correct. Jules, you can't even com com say that you weren't going to do that to him. You literally, the first thing that came out of your mouth when they were like, hey, this was found on the, the scene. You're like, yeah, but I didn't find it. Billings did. That's a little dirty. And he checks her about it. Um, and he he requests to have like 100% honesty from him. Like a part of the, the, the teamwork that has made Marnes and Holston so good was that they trusted each other 100%. And, and he, he asks, he's like, can you, can you do that for him? He's like, I'll try. And he gets, that bothers him. He's like, wait, that's the best that I can get? You, you'll try? Uh, that's not good enough. To which she punches back. You got the syndrome. Quit playing games with me. Like, I see you clenching your fist. I see you going through it. You've got it, which means you're a liar because you shouldn't be holding a gun. You shouldn't be in line for deputy. Nothing that you are trying to do, you should be able to do if you reported the fact that you have the syndrome. And he kind of has to take that on the chin. He then throws the Holston Marnes relationship together is like the people the reason why everybody felt comfortable and felt at one with the two of them is that they always had each other's back to which jules responds and look where that got them damn it jules we then see that billings has to go and sort of get treatment to kind of keep the symptoms of his syndrome at bay so his wife is well aware that he has a sickness um he has a little girl uh that he's hoping he's just hoping and dreaming that she doesn't have the sickness but what's important to note here is that he kind of put himself in this situation. He's supposed to come home periodically throughout the day to sort of get the treatment to, to ease these, 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 these telltales of his syndrome. By hanging at the hip of, of Jules the whole day, he wasn't able to come home. So those things sort of manifest more. And so it's going to be a, it's an interesting thing to kind of have that if he continues to not return back, he could just go for heat. It could be a situation coming down the line where he's supposed to take a shot or do something. He can't because his, his arms are shaking or he's, he's super uh, out of it. So then we just see Jules in her head because Regina got there about her relationship with George. And she's just ready to go home. So she calls on a super quiet night. She calls while in the stacks to uh, call Mar down to Martha on the walkie. She's like, Martha, I'm coming home. I'm doing what you said to do. Dropping off the badge. I'm coming home. And Martha's like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, and 
Jules responds, like, George wasn't a person that I thought he was. And Martha just kind of goes in a little bit and like, look, I, I, you're going to basically you're going to regret if you come back down here. Like you didn't go up there just for George. There are other reasons you went up there. Yeah, you went up there for love. That might have been what pushed you that way. Um, and you still had a love for George. But don't let whatever anger, whatever thing, whatever has happened up there, don't let that be the deciding factor that brings you back down here. And you just sit in fear in this godforsaken place, not doing what it is that you want to do. It's like, you should probably stick it out. To which Jules kind of sucks it up and gets back to work. She goes to talk to Regina again, um, this time sort of off the clock. She's not wearing any gear. She just kind of goes in and has a combo with Regina, to which Regina is freaking the hell out. <laughs> um, Regina is in a, like, yo, they listening. They are always listening. Um, she turns on a fan. It's like, I don't even know if this fan can stop it, but I think it might. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this fan on just so we can have a conversation. To which Regina speaks about the man who knows everything. Um, it's the first time that we sort of hear it. The man who knows everything, he came at night. And he just stood in my bed. I never saw his face. Came in darkness. He just stood in my bedroom and essentially threatened me to give him a, give him names, give him name of every person that I've ever sold a relic to. Um, and I had to give them all off. Or if he didn't, he named two names of people that he would harm in my life. And the reason why I gave him every name is because my mother means a lot to me, and I wanted to keep her alive. So to keep her alive, I had to give every single name. So I gave them George's name. Jules deduces that that's why Patrick was so willing to give. Regina's name, because her name was already in the registry list. Like, if the man who knows everything was already there, him giving that name didn't do anything. Like, he didn't drop a dime on anybody. He gave them somebody that was already sort of recycled. The hard drive comes up by Jules asking about it, and Regina gives Jules the item that George traded for the hard drive. So there was this book that was given that she gave the hard drive back to George. Um, Regina has now decided to give that book to, to, to Jules. With a warning, don't let anybody ever see you with this because people who have this book end up dead. So take that as a warning. Make sure nobody sees you reading it. Nobody sees you because it's not going to end well for you. So Jules takes it back home to her, 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 her stay and um, opens up the book. And it's a traveler's book where you can see images of, of life, vegetation, Sand, water, bikes, just life outside of the silo, outside of this dark, drab, dreariness that they've always been in, just full of life. And then we pull back. As we pull back, we can essentially see that they're in the Truman Show because people are watching them and there are cameras everywhere. Um, and people are now aware that Jules, one, knew that Jules found that George file. Um, they knew who whatever Holston and his wife were doing in that place before because there are always cameras there. The man who knows everything actually does know everything because he's legit watching it all, um, which is terrifying. And now puts so much weight on Jules', Jules back because if anybody who reads that book or grabs that book dies, well, the Grim Reaper then is coming for Jules. Uh, and it's these, these next few episodes are going to be a doozy. This this show does a fantastic job of like answering certain questions, getting you certain things, establishing relationships and bonds, but then building a little bit more on top of that. And um, unlike Lost, where Lost will posit questions and sort of then we'll answer this maybe in season three or season four, they're answering them and they were, were, were stacking on top of that. And uh, this man who knows everything who's sort of sitting outside watching, in a way, I think it's Sims or, or, or Drudge Meadows, but it's not. Because I think they all work for him and they're they're they get their messaging from him. He is sort of they are sort of the feels like the day-to-day -day operators of whatever he's doing, where he kind of operates in the shadows, or he or she, I keep saying he, he operates in the shadows while they all do the work that's done to keep everything whole. And it's clear that anybody who has a relic or finds out stuff about the life pre-silo, uh needs to be stopped at all costs. So why is he trying to keep everybody here? That is sort of the, the key to all of this. Why is it important that everybody has to stay in this silo or, or, or else um, destabilization, if you will, comes to truth. It, it could be Bar Bernard, 
Like, I feel like Bernard is that perfect person to be like, hey, I'm drinking, I'm having, I'm, I'm with you. But in real talk, I am the most dangerous person in this world. What did you guys think about this episode? I thought I, I was fascinated by it. Like, it's not as intense or gripping as episode three and the last episode, which had the chase sequence, but there's a lot of just character pieces. And um, I love this sort of neo, neo noir whodunit that is this. It's a sci-fi neo. It's a genre ma mashing type of show, sci-fi obviously, dystopian future, uh, neo like neo noir, who done it? You're trying to figure out who this mystery box is, but it's so excellently told, and uh, Rebecca Ferguson is just phenomenal as Jules. Um, but I loved it. What did you guys think about this episode called The Relic? Go ahead and leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at Hollywood ADI. You can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail.com. We also have a podcast with the same name. That's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any other place podcasts. We're there. And like always, I got my ticket. You got yours.